If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Many people have misconceptions about what a prepper is or what preppers do. And so I'm just going to kind of define what a prepper is. Is a person who believes in catastrophic or just regular disasters or emergencies likely to occur um, in their lifetime or the future, and they have active preparations for it, sometimes by stockpiling items, sometimes just by being conscientious of where they live and the the uh, natural elements that they have to deal with. Well, we saw a lot of this during Y2K that people felt the world was going to end, and then they were they were stockpiling hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of guns, uh, food, uh, generators. Uh, in bunkers and wherever else. Right. So with, there with, are those which people. Didn't make, you know, and I understand the being prepared. I get that. But if the world is going to end, what makes, you know, okay, I can survive three years on what I've got, then what are you going to do? If the world's done. But anyway, that, that's my thing. Uh, okay, that's not the point here. That's not the point here. Calm but, down. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so basically. They get a bad rap. Yeah, they do get a bad rap. And people think that they're expecting like an apocalypse, that they're isolated people. Maybe they have a bunker. They stockpile ammunition, guns. What have you? And are those people out there? Yes, it could be your neighbor for all you know. There was this actually this article about these people that had all this stuff stored from the fifties. They lived next to these people for years. Then they sold the house, and people who moved in found all this stuff, and they had no idea. So you don't know. However, there are there are good things about being a prepper, having a prepper state of mind, or thinking ahead. Like I have first aid kits in all of our vehicles because you never know, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a prepper thing. A lot of preppers have first aid kits, know about first aid, CPR, things like that. That's one thing. Um, but even if you live in an area such as just Wisconsin, you might want to keep some food on hand in case you do get stuck in a snowstorm so you're not trying to run to the store and get all the milk and bread to make your milk and bread sandwiches before the snow hits. Yeah, I always wondered why it was just milk and bread. I think you need eggs, too, though. Okay. Then you can make French toast. Okay. But here's the thing. When it comes to being a prepper, that term kind of came to being 60s or 70s. It, it, for, for some of you listeners, if you remember as a child or you listen to your grandparents talk, they did this every year. Hey, we grow a garden. We can it because in the winter we can't grow food, and we don't have woodmen's or outposts or beans and barley down the street in which we can just run and get a pineapple and, uh, on December 17th if we want a pineapple. We have to prepare and, and st- store the food because place, if, if you don't have it, you don't eat. Right, and I think as a society we've become used to the convenience of that. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's how I grew up. You know, we were not very far from any type of store. We could walk to the gas station if we needed a gallon of milk, whatever. So it's not like there's anything wrong with it. However, it's kind of good, I think, at times to take a step back, think about these. the store might be coming. Well, look at the hurricane uh, down, down right. south. Um, it makes sense because you don't know, and you don't know if, I mean, if you shop at the store at the wrong time of the week, there might be stocking, and you might not have everything that you need at that store. So... Um, there's things that get kind of messy in a sense, and if you are prepared, at least you ha- you are you're prepared. Right, and not all preppers live in a bunker underground or in a gated uh, property, uh, and not all preppers have thousands of firearms and millions of rounds of ammunition. Uh, there are some individuals that do fall into that category, but. A typical prepper is somebody who is just kind of uh, vast in a lot of different areas of, you know, hunting and fishing and preserving and gardening and mate, uh, mechanical maintenance, uh, kind of a, a one-off, one-all fit-all type of individual who understands, you know, they know a little bit about a lot of things. Like you. Well, I, I, if Are you, you a prepper? I, I, do you have a bunker? We don't you have a bunker, no. You guys telling me that? No, we do not oh. have a bunker. Okay. And you don't need a bunker to be a prepper. <laughs> I know, but it's something. It's something definitely to think about. Is and you don't have to be isolated either. No, but that part does sound nice sometimes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Um, so it's something to think about. Is how maybe not necessarily how you're going to store food for the next four years or whatever. Zombies are going to come knocking on your door or whatever occurs. But it's good to kind of think about. Okay, well, winter's coming, right? So 
and and you don't have to be a, don't. A, a prepper in order to have like an extra shovel in the back of the car, a blanket. That's just sometimes common sense to have. Right, and sometimes it's just something that you do because that's how you uh, you've lived in this region for a long time. You just kind of are aware of that type of thing, and just because you are prepared and conscientious and thinking about what elements you may have to deal with does not make you a prepper. Right. No, uh, well, it doesn't make you a prepper, but preparedness, preparedness. is important mm-hmm. in whatever realm that you're doing, uh, just like us. We don't live in a bunker. We don't have firearms. We don't, you know, have 10 years worth of food stored up, but we pr- we, we look ahead and we plan. Okay, yes, we have the convenience of going to the store just down the road if we need to. But if we prepare and we grow and we can, there is an upfront cost for the equipment in order for that to happen. But in the long run, that now jar of pasta sauce that is how much at the store is now pennies on the dollar because we we, we can 12, 15, 20 quarts of that uh, with the abundance of the harvest that we have. Now, you can't live off pasta sauce for the year, but that, including other other canned items, can sustain and greatly reduce your bill for groceries. You're preparing in that way in order to save money, as well as, you see... Aside from food. Aside from food. Um, you all, and People also always assume situations. So, like, for example, I cut my finger actually chopping vegetables one morning, for my lunch, and I didn't I didn't realize how bad the cut was. It's it's healing or whatever. I mean, it wasn't deep or anything, but it just it, it was kind of gnarly. And so I put a bandaid on it, and I assumed that if that bandaid got weird during the day from washing my hands or whatever, that the first aid kit at work would have bandaids. So I made that assumption. I work for a very large corporation. I'm guessing the assumption was wrong. It was wrong. Okay. Right. So. <laughs> So because, and I work for a large corporation that you think would be on top of it. Their first aid kit would be well stocked. Well, no. So I felt glad that I had band-aids. I have a little first aid kit in my car that had band-aids and whatnot in my car so that I could keep my situation covered during the day. But so you kind of have to think about that, not saying that you need to run out and get a first aid kit for your car, but think like, okay, maybe you shouldn't rely on... You may have the items in your house already. Right. So maybe you shouldn't, you know, just take... Put some band-aids and some junk in a baggie and put it in your glove box. Like, just kind of think, like, you know, maybe I'll be on the road. I might need a band-aid if you got kids. Kids are always scraping themselves and stuff. So it's kind of good to think about those type of things. Right. And, and another way in which we can prep, not so much in the let's build up the stockpile of laundry soap and and food and all that, but it's also you can save money by couponing, too. That's kind of a form of prepping as well. You're, you're saving yeah. money by getting items in which you will need. Does anybody really need 50 bottles of mustard, though? No, I, I'm, I'm just saying in general. you can like maybe you, a couple extra toothbrushes or something? Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and there are people, and, and I know people who fall in the category of prepping, uh, and we, we follow them on social media, and they can be very out there with their post about, I'm preparing for this, or this is going to happen, or the government is this. You know, you, you've seen the very outlandish remarks, and maybe there is some validity to some of those uh, comments. But many people think, based on those criteria in which they post, those individuals might be a little not all there. I don't know if I would say that. Some people do feel that way. I, well, yeah. And, and, and with everybody's just... preparedness, there is a certain level in which they've said, okay, I have this goal, and if this happens, it may be a crazy belief, but if it happens, I am ready for that event if it occurs. Right. So, exactly. And that's on you. You know, if you feel that that's something you want to do, that's fine by all means. I mean, some people probably think we're crazy because we grow a huge garden or whatever. Um, so it just kind of depends on your perspective, but I guess... Um, you need, you need, need to, to look, be, yeah, you need to look and see, you know, having just a couple of days of food is not a, a bad thing. No. To be prepared for. Right. Uh, Especially it, because... No matter where you're at. No matter where you're at, because like I said, you go to the store on the wrong day, 
they're stocking the shelves. What if that truck didn't come that week? Typically, a grocery store has about a three-day, one to three day of fresh produce uh, on, on hand. Right. I'm not talking about fresh produce. I'm talking about just canned Can, good, items yeah. or sh- shelf-stable items, uh, non-perishable, whatever. Even in the freezer section, like a lot of times there is uh, a low amount of items. So if you think about that, we are very dependent on those trucks coming on time, those shipments coming on time. So being a prepper is not a bad thing. Uh, It can be to a number of different levels or extremes. Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. For full link to in-studio video and podcast replay of Season 1, Season 2 underway and added weekly, tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.